video. If you did, please share with a friend or subscribe to our channel so that we can make more fun dance videos. Bye! Hello everybody, welcome to Sunday School for Sunday, April 11th. As you can tell, I'm in my backyard. I hope that the road noise and the birds and the little bit of breeze going on isn't going to be too distracting, but it was just too nice to be inside. <clears throat> uh, I hope that you are enjoying the weather and remember to put on your sunscreen because uh, the sun is a little bit strong. I'm sorry I didn't get the craft packs out to you. Um, with this new lockdown, I wasn't able to pick up all the supplies and I thought it was maybe just best that I stay home as much as possible. So that being said, any of the crafts we're going to do over the next six weeks uh, are going to be done with things that you likely already have at home. To get your own copy of the story, you can go to www.borntowin.net and we're on the junior lesson set and it's unit two called Mission Possible. And this is the lesson set that talks mostly about the miracles that Jesus has uh, performed throughout uh, his time on earth with us. Um, this week we're going to talk about the miracle of the loaves and the fishes. So here we go with our story. Lesson 2. Bread and Fish. Have you ever been really hungry? Not the kind of hunger when it's 10 minutes before lunchtime and you would really like the math lesson to be over or when you've just seen a candy bar commercial on TV. The hunger that comes when you've worked hard and missed a couple of meals. If you have fasted on the Day of Atonement, you know what I mean. It's the hunger you get about three o'clock in the afternoon when there are several hours of fasting left. This kind of hunger shows how important food is to keep your body going. We call food a necessity. One day, Jesus performed a miracle because people were hungry. A large crowd came to hear him teaching. When it was time to eat, Jesus asked his disciples where they could get enough bread. To buy enough for everyone to have just one bite would cost more than eight months of wages, Philip said. There were about 5,000 men, plus women and children. Then Andrew said something that sounded pretty silly, since many people needed to eat. He said, here is a boy with five small barley loaves and two small fish. But how far will it go among so many? At least Andrew knew that normally this small amount wouldn't feed many people. But Jesus took the loaves, gave thanks to God, and gave each person as much as he or she wanted. He did the same thing with the fish. When everyone had eaten, the disciples gathered enough leftover pieces to fill 12 baskets. It was truly a miracle. We don't know why all those people were there. Maybe they wanted Jesus to he heal them. Perhaps they wanted to hear what he had to say. Or were they just curious about who he was? For whatever reason, they, they were there. Jesus had compassion on them. They needed something to eat, and Jesus performed a miracle to feed them. We know that our God is merciful and loving. Does that mean he always provides food for people to eat? There are famines. Why? There's a clue to the answer in Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. What was Christ talking about in the scripture? Matthew 6.25 says, Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Food is one of the things referred to in Matthew 6.33. We, we need to learn to do God's will and to behave as his children should. Then he will provide everything we need. In Matthew chapter 7, verses 9 through 11, Jesus says, Which of you, if his son asks for bread, will give him a stone? Or if he asks for fish, will give him a snake? If you, then, though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give good gifts to those who ask him? Our God is loving and merciful, and he knows we need food, something to drink, clothes to wear, and other necessities. Another time Jesus told a large crowd to look at how God provides for the birds. They don't plant gardens or store things in barns, but he feeds them. As long as we are seeking God and trying to do his will, he will take care of us. He really is interested in getting each of us into his kingdom. Our spiritual well-being is much more important to him than our physical well-being. That's exactly what Jesus was talking about when he said, Do not store up yourselves treasures on earth, but store up for yourselves 
treasures in heaven. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. And that can be found in Matthew chapter 6, verses 19 through 21. What kind of treasures was Christ really talking about? Think of something you really, really want. Maybe an Xbox game or an iPad. Things we want but don't really need can focus our attention on earthly physical things. Toys, games, clothes, and other things are not very important compared to what God wants for us. He wants us to spend eternity with him. To do that, we need to be concerned with the things that matter to God. The physical things that concern us aren't nearly as important as we think. Don't think food isn't important to God. Jesus told his disciples to gather up all the leftover pieces. The food shouldn't be taken for granted or wasted, even if it was created by a miracle. How we take care of physical things shows God what we will do with more important things. So the next time you want something, ask yourself if it is really important. Ask yourself if Jesus thought it was important when he was your age. And the next time you really need something, don't waste your time worrying about whether or not you'll get it. Just ask your Heavenly Father for whatever it is you need. In the meantime, read your Bible and take time to pray. Remember, as much as God cares about your physical needs, He cares about your spiritual needs even more. He really wants to spend eternity with you. Join me in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, please help me to know the difference between what I want and what I need. Help me to truly understand that what you have planned for me is much better than I can ever imagine. I want to seek you, but I need your help. In the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Okay, everybody. So in our story, there is a, a term mentioned there that you maybe aren't familiar with. And if I'm truthful, I wasn't either. They talk about fasting on the Day of Atonement. And it turns out that is the same holiday as Yom Kippur, which is celebrated by the Jewish people. And it involves a day of fasting, which means not eating for the entire day from sundown the day before until sundown the day of atonement. And uh, um, during that time, there's lots of intensive prayer to ask for forgiveness of sins. And in the Jewish culture, they ask for their lives to be put, or sorry, their names to be put down in the book of life. So the curriculum that we follow follows a lot of the old Jewish traditions that way. That's not something our church does. But if you're interested in fasting, please Google it. And, uh, and I, if I can answer any questions for you, I'd be happy to. I have to be truthful. It's not something I've done before. But I do understand that it is one of the ways that you can draw really, really close to God. And lots of people who are um, really praying fervently for something they really want something to happen or something's going on in their life that they will um they will fast in that time frame um so that's what the day of atonement is today's craft we're going to make uh, a fish and what you're going to need is a, a piece of plain paper if you can find one and um some newspaper flyers some tin foil a glue stick and i think that's it here we go Okay, Joy's going to help me with our craft today, and we're going to make a fish that reminds us of the um, Bible story. So to start with, you're going to need a plain piece of paper, and you're going to draw a fish shape. And to draw a fish shape, it's really simple. You do kind of a lopsided smile one way, and then a lopsided smile the other way, like, like that. All right, draw an eye, draw a smile if you want. I might draw some lines on the tail too. All right, Joy's turn. I want to get two and then two. Oh, Joy's getting all fancy. Okay, you're gonna show oh, yeah. your picture. There you go, okay. So next up, you're going to need a glue stick, uh, a newspaper flyer, and some tin foil. Be careful with the tin foil because it uh, can maybe uh, cut your hands if you're not careful. You don't need any scissors because like our rip and stick picture that we did our first week, you're just going to rip the pieces into fish fins and you're going to glue them on to your fish. So now you're going to see Joy and I work really fast.
Okay, so Joy beat me. You probably saw that. She was done before I was. But there is my fish, and that's her fish. And today's story you can find in uh, the book of Matthew, chapter 7, verses 7 through 11. So I'm going to write that on here. M-A-T-T-H-E-W, 7, colon, 7, dash, 11. You can also find it in the book of John, chapter 6. Verse is another colon versus one which I would be one, one through thirteen. There, if you write that on the bottom, then you know where you can find it. You can hang that up on your fridge this week, and we will see you next week. Now we have to go pick up all the paper and tinfoil that blew across our lawn. See you.